What's up my little nerds and welcome back to Monique. If you guys are new here, then what is up? My name is Erica. Hey, how you doing? If you're into the history of the ancient Greeks and the Romans, maybe you're just into the mythology and maybe, maybe you're just here to hear me fly. Maybe you're just here to hear me stumble over my words. That could possibly be it. Well then this is not only the video for you, this is also the channel for you. You guys are going to want to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you know every single time I post in the future. But on topic of today's video, and as you can see from the title, we're going to be going into Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. So let's start this by saying that this is not the first time that I've read the book. That actually I read the book when I was about 17, 18, because I was, it was really like right after the first time I had read the Odyssey and the Iliad. I think, and I was like reading the Aeneid and um, my classics teacher recommended it to me way back then, just for context, by the way, I'm 25, I'm turning 26 this year. So that is how long ago I read this book. But because it's such a popular book and because I remember loving it so much, I wanted to uh, reread it and so then do another review on the channel because again, I remember absolutely adoring it and I remember like totally falling in love with the story and it really, it made me love mythological retellings. It made me want to read more mythological retellings. Uh, because of Madeline Miller's Song of Achilles. This is, by the way, what the book looks like. It's absolutely stunning. But I remember when I bought it for the first time, does anybody else remember that it used to have a red cover? Maybe that's just a testament to how old I am because I literally remember owning the book with the red cover and I have no idea where I put it. And so I had to I had to rebuy it. I'm not mad about that though. I love a new book. Anyways though, I wanted to reread it and see if I loved it just as much as I did the first time. So why don't I tell you guys what the book is about basically um, and then we'll go into my own opinions of uh, Madeline Miller's retelling. So the book follows the Trojan War and it more specifically follows the relationship between Achilles, who is like the, the hero of the Trojan War, right? He is like the Greek, ancient Greek hero even. Um, if anybody knows any Greek heroes, it will be Achilles. So it follows him and his best friend, forward slash lover, forward slash uh, just whatever, companion, right? That's another word they use, Patroclus. Patroclus is oftentimes forgotten. Whenever we retell about the Trojan War or whatever, Patroclus, for some reason, people are just like, oh, who? And so I appreciate that Madeline Miller wanted to tell the story from Patroclus's point of view. And so we see from Patroclus and Achilles' as kids, from, you know, when they meet and all of this, to them being shipped off to Troy, to then uh, existing in the camps, the Greek camps at Troy during the Trojan War, and um, subsequently their mythological deaths. So so that's the story. It's just the story of really Patroclus's life, but it's really about sort of the Trojan War, how that came to be through the eyes and through the relationship of these two characters. Now, before I get into my views, there are a couple of things that I think are really important to highlight for you guys. Maybe you guys don't know this. Maybe you guys are just big fans of the books. Maybe you haven't even read the book and you're still deciding if you should read the book, which I would recommend for enjoyability. You just should because the book is so <laughs> enjoyable as a whole. But there are some classical and ancient history things that you guys should probably know before or maybe after in order to reflect on this book. Number one is that actually men sleeping with men in the ancient world was totally normal. And it's why they didn't have a word for this because marriage, the structure of marriage was different. And so therefore men wouldn't marry other men, but it was very, very normal and expected for men to sleep with other men. Let me explain that. So marriage in the ancient world was not about love. Marriage in the ancient world was about producing children in order to carry on your family line. Like that was the most important thing, that lineage, that, that, that continuing the family name, all of that was incredibly important to the ancient world. It had to do with inheritance and all of that as well, positions of power, uh, uh, you know, power dynamics between families as well. All of this was very important for marriage and love was, was really not important whatsoever. Like if you happen to love your partner after getting married, that was just like a bonus. But the majority of couples that we have from the ancient world hate each other, to put it lightly. A good example of a mythological couple who did love each other is um, Penelope and Odysseus from the Trojan War cycle. But they're the only one pretty much from that cycle who actually genuinely fell in love, right? The rest of them, Clytemnestra and Agamemnon, hate each other. Menelaus and, and Helen, I mean, they got on, but like, was he totally in love with her? The whole Trojan War was really about pride more so than I love Helen and I want her back because I love her so much. It was mainly, you know, them being like, well, I'm a man and another man can't steal from me. So the structure of marriage is different. Now, women would get married very young, men would get married much older. And so therefore men during that period, as well as sleeping with slaves and everything before they got married, they would sleep with other men. There was this whole, it's kind of complicated to get into, so I'm not really going to get into the whole nitty gritty of it. But if you guys want to know more, I will be linking a lot of different things in the description below. Now, because of this, sexuality was different in the ancient world, that it wasn't, at least in the ancient Greek world, that this is what I'm talking about right now, obviously with the Trojan War. We're talking about the ancient Greek world. Rome is a little bit different, but in regards to the ancient Greek world, sexuality was was different. It wasn't straight and gay. It was everybody had sex with whoever the hell they wanted to. 
until you got married. So if you wanted to marry a man, that wasn't gonna happen because marrying a man could not give you children if you were another man, right? But you could keep sleeping with him, nobody gave a shit. You could literally have sex with him forever. No one would bat an eye. So that's an important thing for you guys to understand before we actually dive into my views of this book because the relationship between Patroclus and Achilles would not have been like taboo, right? It would not have been a big deal among the other men of the camp. It would not have been a big deal to the people hearing the story. Like that would have been, if they were, there are no like explicit scenes in uh, the Iliad or in other mythology that we have at least um, um, nowadays that we can read because a lot of it is lost. None of it is explicit that they were like definitely hooking up, but it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, obvious that they probably were. Like Achilles literally wails when he dies. Sounds like love to a lot of people. So you know what the other points aren't actually that important. I'm just gonna link them in the description below. I'm gonna write some stuff up for my website for the extra points because this is already 10 minutes long as I'm sitting here recording it. So I have to cut a lot of that anyways. Let's just go into my views of the book. Before I get into my actual views, I want you guys to not <laughs> jump at my throat when I say this stuff. I, I adore this story. You guys know that I'm a huge fan of the Iliad, that like those are my boys, like all of those heroes, all of those Trojan War heroes. I'm obsessed with them and I'm obsessed with the book. I've read it a hundred thousand times. I've read the Odyssey a hundred thousand times. And so, um, and so everything that I'm about to say is just coming from the ancient source material and comparing it to that rather than me just trying to be a That's not a good way to start this, but let's just, Overall though, I loved this book, as I said, that it's very, very enjoyable. So I read it very quickly and I really loved it. I thought the story was really compelling. I thought that uh, the writing, that Miller's writing is just so like enchanting. It's so lyrical that literally I couldn't put it down. I was completely, completely obsessed with it. I thought she did Achilles really well. I thought her portrayal of Achilles was fantastic because he is very much a man of few words until he gets angry and then he does explode as we see in the book that he just completely like is just so irrational and that's just so Achilles and it's so true to who Achilles is in the original mythology as well. So I really appreciated that and I love that she included other characters in there like Odysseus was done amazing. Uh, Diomedes, obviously, that's my boy, okay? That is like my favorite character ever. She had him in here and she had him do great. I did think sometimes he spoke a little bit too much, but I was just like, screw it. I don't mind because Diomedes is in it. So he can speak as much or as little as he wants. His name is there. But in saying all of that, this is so hard for me to say because I know that everyone's gonna jump down my throat as soon as I say it. I didn't like Patroclus in this book. Now hear me out, hear me out. Before you guys start jumping down my throat, let me explain and let me do it in detail. So Patroclus in this book, as you guys know, obviously if you guys have read it and if not, then I'm gonna spoil it. But Patroclus in this version of the story is not a fighter. In fact, he's quite gentle. He, you know, hangs out with Achilles all the time and Achilles brings him to the Trojan War. However, he doesn't really fight. He stays in the camp the majority of the time. He stays with the women. Um, he very much is sort of, for lack of a better phrase, I'm sorry, he kind of becomes like a housewife. He kind of just stays in the camp and waits for Achilles to come back and tell him about his day. And that, even though it worked for the story, and I don't mind Patroclus in this story. It's not who Patroclus was in mythology. And I love Patroclus in mythology. It's so hard not to. Like Patroclus in mythology is a terrifying. He's so scary, you guys. Like he's supposed to be. He's like second to Achilles in, in fighting among the Myrmidons, not among all of the Greeks. But among the Myrmidons, he's second to Achilles. He's so tough. Like he craves war just as much as Achilles does. And so I really didn't, I didn't like how he just never became a fighter in this book. I was kind of expecting it to happen. I didn't mind that he started off as not a fighter. I was like, he's a kid, whatever. But the fact that he never really learned and he never really lent into that, I just, I didn't get it. And I didn't really like that whole way that Patroclus was done because I don't see a problem with Patroclus being scary and still being with Achilles. Like, I like I, I don't see the issue there. Do you understand what I'm saying? That like, Achilles being tough and Patroclus being really soft, I don't know why Patroclus couldn't be tough as well in order for them to still come together and to still love each other, you know? They do it in the original mythology, so I don't know why they couldn't do it in this version. And because Patroclus is so soft in this version of the story and then he becomes a hero, like he's literally like, the most average person that becomes this like great hero, that there are certain things that had to be changed in order for Patroclus's character to then work um, on the time frame of the Trojan War in this book. So the most notable one is that you guys will probably be familiar with Miller's version of this, where he, Patroclus, convinces Achilles to let him wear, hi wear Achilles' armor. Oh my goodness, that was a lot. Patroclus convinces Achilles to let Patroclus wear Achilles' armor, whilst Achilles is like, you know, doing his little strop in the tent, right? So that's a real event that does happen in the Iliad. However, in this version of the story, 
Patroclus begs, he just, you know, he comes up with the idea himself. He then begs Achilles to do it and Achilles then says, yeah, yeah, you can totally have my armor. I'm not really happy about this, but you can have it as long as you promise me that you will not uh, face off with Hector and you will not fight anybody. Because in this version of the story, he's not a fighter. So of course, they're gonna be like, absolutely not. Whereas in the Iliad, when this happens, it's actually old man Nestor who gives Patroclus the idea, being like, can you, you know, maybe put on his armor and just go out there to buy us some time. Like the whole reasoning for it is the same, but Nestor says it instead of Patroclus just coming up with it. And then when he goes to Achilles, the deal that they make is not, oh, Patroclus won't fight. It's that Patroclus will not fight Hector specifically again, but also that he will not take Troy. Now that is a testament to how tough Patroclus is, that that's the deal that it's made. Not to take Troy because he's perfectly capable of doing it, right? So I wanna stress that, that he was super tough. And so finally, when he does go out into the battlefield in book 16 of the Iliad, and in this one, he's in the chariot with Automedon, and you know, he sort of stays in the chariot and he's like holding the spear and he doesn't really know what to do with it. Uh, let me tell you that the Patroclus in the Iliad goes out there and he kills everyone, okay? In that scene where he goes out into the Trojan, the, into among the Trojans as they're fighting, he kills kind of around 52 people. I say kind of around because every single time I count, it comes out between 50 and 56. So I, I, I'm just kind of saying 52, it's somewhere around there. He kills 52 people and in one line, he kills 27 because he kills nine people three times over. Like that's how terrifying he is, that he is an absolute force to be reckoned with. Not only that, but in that exact scene in Madeline Miller's version, when he kills Sarpedon, it's sort of the stroke of luck where he just kind of, you know, throws the spear and it just so happens to hit Sarpedon, who's the son of Zeus. Whereas in the Iliad, that's a calculated attack. That is Patroclus being like, you, I'm gonna kill you because you're in my way and I'm in the zone right now. And you read it and again, you're like, oh, my God, this man is a killing machine. So there's another difference between that scene and the third difference between that scene. And again, because we had to change all this because Patroclus was not a fighter in Miller's version. So when Patroclus then starts trying to climb the walls of Troy and in Miller's version, she says that, you know, he can feel uh, Apollo coming out and like, you know, pulling him down from the wall and he doesn't know what came over him. The Patroclus in the Iliad, he's climbing the walls and he nearly gets to the top every single time and Apollo has to scream at him to be like, this is not your fate and this is not your destiny. I need you to cut the f out. In order for Patroclus to come to and to be like, oh, I did tell Achilles that I wasn't gonna do this without him. But again, that is how tough he is. He's a real like manly man and still loves Achilles and Achilles still loves him. That's why I don't, I don't know why that side of Patroclus had to be changed. I don't know if maybe you guys can tell me your views of like why maybe we had to make Patroclus less tough in order to make this relationship more enjoyable to read for a modern audience because maybe because I've read it in the ancient sources, I just don't understand why that had to be done because I kind of like the idea that both of them were tough both of them are super worthy. And then obviously, you know, Patroclus does die and then Achilles does come out and he does kill Hector because Hector killed um, Patroclus. Like all of that is true, but it was just Patroclus being sort of a baby and sort of about a housewife. And I just wasn't really, I wasn't really about that in this book. I don't like that Patroclus. That's not my Patroclus. That's not Homer's Patroclus either. But overall I did, again, I just want to really stress this, that overall I did like the book. I just didn't like Patroclus in it because I really felt like we were sort of, giving into this this modern idea of, of relationship dynamics of like one person being more calm, one person being more aggressive um, of, of, you know, between two men that, you know, one of them had to be more, uh, more warm, you know, like Patroclus was more warm, Achilles was more cold, um, which is a very, it's a stereotype among gay relationships and especially among like gay male relationships, you have like the femme one and then you have, you know, like, the tough one. And I don't think that that's necessary at all. I think that that is a stereotype that we're sort of leaning into here which I didn't like because that's not who the men are. The men are both tough, they're both terrifying and they both love each other. And why did that have to be changed? But all of that could just be me. I do wanna say, like I do acknowledge that all of that could just be me because I love the ancient sources and I love those characters. But if you guys have differing views, if you guys have the same views, then um, please let me know. Let me know in the comments below. Maybe you guys read this and you have read the Iliad and you preferred this Patroclus. Let me know why. Like, absolutely, that's totally great. That would be a great conversation to have. I love talking about books with you guys, but just remember to be a little bit nice <laughs> because you guys really did attack me on the last book review I did of this, but which I've now deleted. So don't even try, don't try. But yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning into this book review. For all of my other um, ancient thoughts that I had in regards to customs, in regards to all of that sort of stuff that I didn't mention in this video or that got cut out, I did write a sort of like a, a little 
a little kind of lesson history thing on a bunch of things that um, that I think are important in order to understand the whole dynamic and the whole war, um, the, the dynamic between the characters and the war that's happening um, um, and all of that, because obviously that's important for the context of the book. That's all on my website. That's www.moaninc.co.uk. I always say that really fast. Don't worry, it's in the description below. So yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in and we'll be seeing you next time with more book reviews here on Moaninc. We'll see you then.